Seven footers, welcome back to another episode. Gerard here. So glad you guys are joining us. Hopefully, you're safe. You and your families dealing with the global pandemic that is the coronavirus. I'm so pleased to be joined once again by Coach David Thorpe, the godfather of player development. Uh, he's also a true hoop, someone I've gotten to know really well. Coach, thanks for joining us again. Yeah, let's talk hoops. Let's talk hoops. So we're obviously, because we love the NBA so much, we're bummed that, you know, the season is likely not going to restart again. But there was a lot of good action that took place up until now. And one of the things that has been racking my brain has been, why don't, and I include myself in this, we in the media, the casual fan, even people who consider themselves hardcore NBA fans, why are we not respecting the Milwaukee Bucks? I think there's a really... Uh ignorant aspect of fandom and uh, analysts, and I'll claim guilt to some degree, I try to fight this, and that is, well, you gotta prove it first. I feel like that's so stupid. <laughs> well, if that's the case, what do we, who, it doesn't take an expert. What they've already <laughs> won, right? right. Yeah. Our job is to project, Yeah. right? So um, we're gonna be wrong. I'm, I've been wrong. I, I thought Golden State would, would beat the Cavs when they didn't. I thought they beat the Raptors when they didn't. It doesn't matter that there were injuries or whatever. I was wrong. Right. right. But that's my job, right? And so when I think I, I think Giannis played three preseason games when I thought he'd be a max player. Mm -hmm. um, that's my job. I thought Carl Anthony Towns, after two regular season games, had more offensive upside than Anthony Davis. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. But I'm not afraid to say it. So... I don't need, I should not need to see Milwaukee win a championship before I'm ready to say they're the best team. They're the best team. Now, the regular season, we know, is a different animal than mm -hmm. the postseason. And I understand why the Lakers could win. Um, it's blackjack. You're, you're, you're betting right. on probabilities. Yes. But if you tell me Milwaukee can't win because they've never won before, well, I'll just, I'm not going to listen to you anymore because you have no idea who you're fucking <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely can win a championship. Yes. Assuming they, the season went on, yeah, Milwaukee could win. In fact, I'd probably make them the favorites. Doesn't mean they would definitely win, but right. there is some number of probability that exists, whereas you wouldn't say they're not Cleveland or even a playoff team like Indiana. Indiana was not going to win a championship this right. year. Even they made the playoffs, they were not going to win a championship. Um, I did a thing last year. Henry asked me, to, who, who are the teams that could win a championship? And I don't remember how many teams I included. It might have been five. The Raptors were on that list. I'm very yep. thankful for. Philadelphia wasn't. I was probably wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was probably wrong. I did not see any scenario where they would be able to win all those series. But let's face it. If they beat that uh, Kawhi team in game seven, mm -hmm. uh, that, that ball doesn't go in, they win it overtime. One bounce, yeah. Yeah, maybe, they, maybe they're going to beat Milwaukee. And then, then Golden State, all their injuries. I was probably wrong. But the, so that's how we look at it is, is what are the, you know, how many arrows are in that uh, in that quiver uh, mm -hmm. that have that team's name on it? Milwaukee's got a bunch. And it's interesting. I talked to Shaq once and we were, it was uh, two years ago. So it was when the Rockets, it was actually the year that I picked the Rockets to win the title. And that's when they pushed Golden State to seven. And, you know, everyone says no Chris Paul injury. Maybe they do. And maybe they actually should have. Right. And I said something to him and it was I said, what about the Rockets, Shaq? And he said, yeah, that championship DNA. And I said to him, well, Shaq. And, you know, you're a Hall of Famer, so you know more basketball than I do. But nobody has championship DNA until they win a championship. Yeah. You didn't have it till you won one, right? So he's like, and he, he yes, you're correct. But he's like, there's something. And so I wonder with Milwaukee, and I think I do know this, is it that we don't respect Chris Middleton enough? Is that our issue? Because if we're looking at one, two combinations, right? Giannis is your one. Everyone's all good with that. But if he's your number two, I think a lot of people, that's my theory anyway, they don't trust Chris Middleton enough. But everything, the advanced numbers on Synergy tells me is that he's excellent at everything on offense. And my eyes tell me he's excellent at everything on offense. But there's some kind of disconnect happening between the name Chris Middleton and what is actually true. 
Yeah, I don't love, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. I don't ever look at it as a number two. Um, the Raptors did not win last year without Fred Van Bleet. Very true. So you got to have a bunch of guys. Like, you have to have a bunch of guys. Uh, it's easier when you have Giannis as your best player. Okay. okay. So, but I'm not sure the most important thing isn't he's got to make more threes. Like, there's so many variables. So I don't call it championship DNA. I, I, again, I, well, players don't always know this kind of stuff. <laughs> right. Uh, that's, that's what makes them players. And there's nothing wrong with that. They, they, you know, you wouldn't ask a, your doctor, your heart surgeon, for advice on his taxes. He does taxes right. every year, well, <laughs> ostensibly anyway. But right. he's not an expert in that, right? Players play. So um, until they get to be in management, that's different. Um, to me, it's not championship DNA that way, meaning the experience winning a champion championship. It's culture. It's how you know Milwaukee, something happened last year when mm -hmm. Milwaukee couldn't get off the snide when they when they got hit in the mouth the first time up 2-0. And mm -hmm. I think they were up in game three. They like were 3 0. Yeah, it went to overtime. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought, right? And they, they couldn't do it. So so they, they got that slippery slope. And Toronto played really well. Van Fleet couldn't miss a shot, whatever. So um I don't know that Milwaukee has that much better culture this year, but all those wins add some swag. Uh, you, you players lose confidence, and that's what the wins are for, right? That's what the wins are for. They've got a bunch, and and I also have always believed this too. I think you have to lose in a way that destroys you, mm -hmm. because it almost you almost willing to say, "Well, bring it on now." Like you remember. Um, you ever see Forrest Gump? Yep, of course. So when uh, when Agent, uh, what is it, uh, Sergeant Dan? Yeah, uh, Lieutenant Dan. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Dan, mm -hmm. Sergeant Dan, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> when he's on that on that Forrest Gump boat, shrimping boat, mm -hmm. and he's yelling at God, "Is this all you got?" The dude had lost his legs in war. Yeah. Thought he was gonna die. He's gonna be bothered by some wind and some waves. Right, I'm but good. He already <laughs> dealt with it, so. I feel like when you get ripped raw, it doesn't have to be losing in a championship. The Raptors had lost enough mm -hmm. that they, what else is going to do to Kyle Lowry that he hasn't already had done? Right. 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 Um, they, they just weren't afraid anymore. They, they had no fear of that. And so I think Milwaukee has been tagged. And you got to get tagged in the mouth, metaphorically. Mm -hmm. They had been. So I just feel like they're steeled now. There's a resolve there that uh, that can help them beat Lakers, Clippers, or Celtics, Raptors. Yeah. Right? Doesn't mean they will, but I, but I think they can do it now. It is interesting that you mentioned that having to get tagged. Right, that's what we grew up watching the NBA. Um, you know, I started watching the NBA in the mid '80s. Grew up as a Laker fan, right? So it was watching those teams trying to get past the Celtics that just couldn't do it. Right, the Pistons would just run into them and just get their heads bashed in. It would go seven games, which by definition means it was an even series, but they couldn't just get over that hump. But it was those years of getting smacked by them. Finally, they do it. They get to the finals. They get to the finals. They lose to the Lakers. So again, we got to the mountains up. Get kicked back down. But that's what had that resolve. And they're one of the great and like sort of like forgotten dynasties of that period, right? Those Pistons teams were so excellent. They won back-to-back -back titles. But they wouldn't have done that if they didn't get those beatings. And I think about modern day, the Golden State Warriors. Yes, they lost that seven-game series up 3-1 to the Cavs. Now... They got Durant that summer. I wonder if they didn't get Durant that summer, what if that same sort of fortitude would have like just buoyed them and they'd have been unstoppable, you know? But it's one of those we'll never know what would happen. <laughs> no, and that goes to what I was saying before about culture. Um, they had built something. I mean, Steph Curry is their best player. He's right. an amazing culture builder, right? Uh, Draymond's got fired. It was Draymond's fault for loss because he. He's the one that got everyone fired up to win the 73 games. I thought it was a mistake and said that all year. I used to argue with Brian Winhurst and Mark Stein yep. about, like, who cares about the regular season, man? Just win the right. championship. Get yep. your rest. Um, so that's one thing about Milwaukee this year is they lost some games late because they were on a hell of a, a mm -hmm. record uh, run. But, I mean, what is Giannis averaging? 30, well, what was he averaging? 31 minutes? Yeah, playing 30, 32 minutes. If, they, if we do get back, and I, I – I'm more optimistic than you are. I thought, I've not seen the news yet today, uh, more than just a minute or two. Uh, I feel like we need to get, you know, it's easy to, I'm no virus expert, I'm a basketball coach, but <laughs> it's easy to look at America. But we should be looking at cities. And if there's enough cities 
that have have not just flattened the curve, but kind of ended the curve. Uh, there's a chance in June we can start doing some stuff again, right? Yeah, That's how I yeah. see it. And um, everyone's going to be arrested now. It's going to be different because they've not been doing anything. Not uh, yeah. or less. And so there's going to be, there needs to be a process there to get that back going. We could potentially see the greatest playoffs ever, in part because <laughs> we're also desperate to see it. It'll yeah. be just magical. First of all, if you've been in an NBA playoff arena before, mm-hmm. it's always magical. It yes. really is. It really is exciting. Orlando's not known for their best fans, but I've been to the NBA. I went to the NBA Finals games there, mm-hmm. I guess the Lakers, and been to a lot of playoff games there, and it's special. I've been. I've been to a lot of places. Miami, amazing. Um, when they were running things, uh, and then the fact that these guys are going to be super healthy. We mm-hmm. might see the best basketball ever. And he, in that context, I mean, I, st- I think Milwaukee, if not the favorite, or they're certainly the favorite of the East, mm-hmm. have the goods to beat L- the two L.A. teams. I mean, the, the Clippers haven't. What have they ever done? You right. Know, do, do they have to lose first? I mean, Kawhi's been through it. Paul Jordan's been right. a bunch. Yep. Um, I don't know. I think that I think Milwaukee, as a collective unit, has an advantage. Yeah, no, I, I because of that continuity, I think you're dead on. And so you talked about the East. One of everyone's favorite teams that confounds them is the Philadelphia 76ers. And what is the ceiling of that team with, I mean, you've got to agree, two of the best talents in the league under the age of 25, right? I mean, how many duos under 25 are you taking ahead of Embiid and Simmons? Not many, right? So what, I mean, of course, the easy thing is Ben's not shooting. Okay, the, but what are you seeing as a coach in terms of those two and what that team could look like differently if they figure some things out. Because to me, you land two guys like that, you have to figure out a way to make it work. You have to. You know, part of the problem there is I think that there is a, a conflict of strategy. They, they, they want to pound the ball inside to Embiid. I don't think that's a great way to win games anymore. I don't think Joel loves it. I don't think it's the best way to utilize Ben, um, who's an amazing transition finisher, passer. He's a force unlike almost anyone we've ever seen. Uh, I grew up, uh, well, I'm older than you, but I grew up a Laker fan too. My I dad <laughs> seen Jerry West mm-hmm. play against the Citadel when he was at West Virginia and realized I'm looking at one of the best players of all time in the 1961, uh, maybe, or 60. And... Um, so I knew about Jerry West when I was born in 65 and became a Laker fan. Plus, I like the color purple, the color purple <laughs> the movie and the movie in the book. I, I had a Laker swatch watch and a Laker jacket. And I, all, I watched every, back then it was Friday night, 1130 tape delay. Yep. Uh, Magic's my favorite player of all time. He passed Jerry West up. I love Norm Nixon. They, mm-hmm. they, were, they were world champions in year one with Magic as a rookie. Yep. I listened to that game six on the radio, live, Philly, 40, yeah. 42, 15, and 7. And then I watched my brother Mike, now he's Dr. Mike, on tape delay at 11.30. Like, I was not missing that, knowing we already won when I listened to the radio. And Magic was uh, incredible in transition, and so was Ben. So I think they should lead the league in pace. Yeah. And... I, I think that one of those two probably are. Even though I think together they're – I haven't looked at plus minus – since we ended, I think they're really good together. Yeah, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. But but it's not fun. Like Jimmy Butler didn't love being yelled at for not throwing the ball inside all the time. Nope, you can go to games and hear Brett Brown yelling at him, "Get the ball inside." Like you just want to hear that. So I, I think there's an issue there. I also think they're very immature. Ben's immature. Joel's immature. Uh, there's a you know I like Coach Brown very very much. There seems to be some kind of dissonance there. Mm-hmm. Brett, if he was to lose his job, would get hired in second somewhere else, and he'd be great. But uh, there's, there's, there's something in their culture there that's keeping them from reaching their potential. I also think that they, they could always turn it around because, like you said, those guys are superlative talents. They, you know, one thing I see, I liked your idea, and that's what I always think, too, is them playing more up-tempo. Joe's got to be in better shape, and I don't know who can hold him account to it, and or I don't know if it's because he's off so injured that he can't do enough high level. I I don't know enough to know what's going on 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 that end with him. That's a really important point. Is the injury thing? 
And this is where I go back to getting your heart ripped out. Uh, I don't think last year's Kawhi game was enough for Joel because he's so young. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it hap- if this year didn't have this pandemic and they lost again in the semifinals, or the mm-hmm. finals, or even first round, what were they? What was their seed going to be? I mean, they they were like five or yeah, they were in yeah. falling five and six they, somewhere in that five six. They, they, they might have lost playing, but, right. They might have lost round one, and at some point, then you look in the mirror if you're Joel Embiid and say like something's got to change. And maybe you could ask for the coaching to be changed, and maybe you could want to be traded or Ben to be traded. Or maybe you think, I, I need to commit myself to being the best athlete on the court for myself, be in the best shape, right? We've seen what players like Kevin Love have done with their body mm-hmm. and other players who lost a ton of weight and really leaned out. Man, mm-hmm. imagine Joel leaned out. I, he'd be MVP of the, the league. So the, the, those, guys, those guys playing with that pace. Joel's one, there's a handful of guys in my mind who can do both, right? Who can be MVP. And defensive player of the year. Like Joel Embiid is that caliber of player, right? Giannis one, caliber gets player. The MVP. One, one way he gets the MVP is the way he can do defensively. Uh, look at the way, uh, you know, I was getting beat up on Twitter early this season for asking questions about Jokic's weight, mm-hmm. who was much more obese or heavy than Joel. He was. He came in out of shape. <laughs> it was very obvious to me. I even saw, we wrote about Troop in this summer. He just didn't have it. Um, but if you look at Jokic's numbers the last, you know, X number of weeks of the season, and how Hang thin on. he was getting. Mm-hmm. If Joel did that, he, he'd be a different animal. So I'd like for him to look inward, but it doesn't mean he will. Right. Yeah. He's doing some good things with his pandemic, and he seems mm-hmm. to be a great person. I watched him play in high school. I t- I, when I watched him live in high school, at six minutes from my house, I texted Masai. I don't follow high school basketball. And I said, there's this incredible African kid <laughs> on a team called The Rock, coming, which plays out of Gainesville, Florida. I said, is he one of yours? And he told me all about Joel. And I had no, my son who was going to Kansas, I didn't even ask my son. And when I asked Masai on a text, I'm like, what's this kid going? And I showed Max and I asked Masai, and Max said, Dad, he's going to Kansas. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> really But what a talent. And really selfless guy. Really was impressed with him. And I saw Wiggins too in the same tournament. He was mm. great talent, great guy. Loved everything about him. It just hasn't clicked for him for different reasons. That we could talk about if you ever wanted to, but I, I want Joel to just say, you know what? I'm going to do one year, make it all about me, lose as much weight as I can, and still play at a high level, be the best team that I can possibly be. No passive aggressive stuff, no clowning, uh, and then if I can't lead us to the championship, maybe I'll ask for something different. You know? Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm with you there. You know, we're talking about young young players in the league. One of my favorite young duos is down in Memphis. I know you 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 know the former owner or is he still the owner? Robert Paris still the owner in Memphis? Yeah, it's totally different now. Okay, so I know you know Rob. Um, yeah. I love Jaron Jackson Jr. and John ja Morant. Like that duo to me. And again, I know small markets and all that, but if they can figure out how to keep that core together, that to me is a future, you know, conference contending team because those guys are excellent. And it's what I think. I love John Morant, obviously rookie of the year, even though Zion's been doing amazing, just because he played more games and, you know, he did it longer. To me, though, the future of that team is going to be how well and how how good Jaron Jackson Jr. gets. Because when he came out of the draft, I said, I knew Luka was number one, said that, Jeremy would be all that. I said, because of his talent, I was like, Jaron Jackson Jr. could be, he could end up being the best player in this draft class if everything comes together right for him. But as a coach and a basketball, what you watch, I want to know what you think about Jaron and John ja Morant. Yeah, I thought the same thing with Jaron Jackson. Man, maybe I was wrong because I, I, I love Luca. Um, I watched the Euroleague. I watched him play from Real Madrid a lot that season because I had some clients in, in the Euroleague and the ACB where they played. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I thought, uh, what they call him, Triple J, what's his nickname? Tri- Triple J, yep, Triple J. I thought he was Tim Duncan 2.0. Yeah. I thought there was an, a feel – for uh, defensive angles and, and covering uh, uh, space that can make him an elite. I mean, Tim Duncan as a defender was a fucking joke. Elite, His elite. Whole career, <laughs> joke. I, I, you could, I could, I may one day decide to teach a college class. It's one of the things I've thought about doing when, when my kids are gone. And I would just do it on Tim Duncan on defense. 
I'll come audit that class. I'm yeah. happy. I would love it. <laughs> his understanding of timing and angles is. Ex I watch games sometime now on synergy just to study that. So I thought Jackson had some of the kernels for that to grow, right? And shot threes, right? So like the guy in an offensive game. So I'm an enormous fan. I your point on him being the key. I want to I want to make this clear because I I know where you're going with this. You, what you're saying is we know John Morant's going to be an all-star. Done. I agree with you. Done. There's no mystery. He's Done. going to be a, a first-team all-league point guard, if not MVP candidate. Done. Like, he's Damian Lillard talent. Fair to say? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. Agreed. Like, Damian Lillard's first-team NBA level talent. So, John Morant yes. is good. Right. So, and, and not and coincidentally, they both played, you know, barely mid-major schools. Uh, mm -hmm. You could even argue low major for Dane. So, um, that's a given. So I, I would argue that it can't just be Triple J. It's, it, to, to win, it's like I said with Fred Van Bleet. You've mm -hmm. got to have more guys. Brandon Clark has got some talent. I you like Brandon Clark. Anyone else, yeah, he's really good. I don't know that anything else matters now. It's, and I think the coach is good. How is management? How is front office? Mm -hmm. I'm owner, head coach. All those things got to continue to gel. And then they can build a team around that dynamic duo. But I, I completely agree with you that Ja and Triple J are good enough to be one of those duos that take that team to contending every year they're together. They complement each other very, very well on both ends. Ja can also be an elite point guard defender. Yeah. He's yeah. Like, when we were, we were down at All Star and someone had asked them a question, you know, you guys, you get along so well. Who do you guys kind of see yourselves as? Because you're like a young dynamic duo. And Triple J was like, we're like Katie and Russ. And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, my God. Like, I mean, remember those guys when they were 23? Like, they went to the NBA Finals. And what everyone forgets about that Oklahoma City team is, yes, Miami won in five. All four games, and including the game that Oklahoma City won, were close. Only game five was a blowout, right? They were just too young and couldn't, you know, make the right plays down the stretch. But they were incredible. And that was with Harden being not very good, right, like in that, in that final series. So, as you know, Coach, it, so many things have to go into winning. It's, I mean – Everything has to be clicking. Your culture and these margins are razor thin. It's a bounce here. It's a this here. And, and coaching sometimes matters in those situations, right? Like, can we get to the, our pet play and do what we want? And what's our counter off that? And I think that's, again, another thing I think inside the game that the casual fan may not see. <clears throat> yeah, the razor, the razor thin margins, uh, sometimes, Golden State, uh, if, they, if you just gave them a razor thin margin, they, they, they won five championships. Yeah. They they got their they got a huge hole blown in them. Curry was nothing with his, that ankle. Draymond missed the game, and then Curry's ankle was destroyed, and and they lost to LeBron James in Game Seven after they up three one, and Kyrie made a shot that with probability was probably below fifteen, whatever it was, was really low on that one big three, and then of course last year, look all the injuries it took, <laughs> it took to lose <laughs> six games. So most teams don't have that kind of margin. Right. They can only afford one little injury, and that'd be it. So, right. Uh, you, that's why, to me, you just have to build a team that can win 50-plus games a year, uh, that has an amazing culture, that everyone gets along, that they grow together, they build together, and then you give luck a chance to happen. It's like in putting in golf. You want to make sure you, the speed of your putt is, 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 is the right speed. So that if you end up reading the line grid or go in, if you don't, it's going to be really close. But if you whack it, it doesn't really matter what the line is. You're, just, you're right. not going to make it ever. You got to get the speed right. I think if a team can win 50 plus games a year, they got the speed right. Obviously, you obviously don't want to do it with a bunch of 38 year olds. Right. You want to make sure you got the age right, the culture right, and then you give yourself a chance. And if Memphis does that, they they already know they have Final Four capability uh, for their conference at least because of those two amazing mm -hmm. talents. Absolutely. All right. Last two quick things to get you out of here. Top five, but I didn't tell you what they were going to be about. So I know that you often say, you know, you do one drink a night or one drink a week or whatever. But during these coronavirus times, you <laughs> all bets are on. Yes. And like me, you are a I'm a single malt whiskey kind of guy, uh, single malt uh, scotch kind of guy, as are you. Your five favorite drinks, they could be just a brand of single malt that you like or a mixed drink you like. Go. Great question. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I live myself normally to one night a week, two drinks that night, almost always, not always. I've, I've had at least one drink every night since, since, the, <laughs> since the OKC Utah game, which I was watching live yeah. when it literally when it, when it boiled down. So 
I, I'll start with just any good scotch. I get, I learned to drink scotch with my dad. Uh, you could, when I was growing up, you at 19, you could drink legally, uh, and at bar mitzvahs, whatever. And I come back from college, we would have, so I learned to drink alcohol with scotch and I, I drank it then with, uh, club soda, a twist of lemon. I'm older now. I just like it. I like Neat. neater on the rock, yeah. one little ice cube. I don't mind a little water with it. I'm not that kind of purist. Um, I, I make my wife and I, uh, old fashions. Nice. Uh, I make it with sugar, I make it the old fashioned way with sugar cubes, the okay. orange peel. I, I really, and I'll do it with rye, with bourbon, with whiskey. I mix it up. Uh, my favorite drink is other than scotch would be uh, a homemade martini. Nice. Made with really good gin. I've had hundred dollar uh, glasses of gin once and it was the best <laughs> gin of my life. It was a no risk for the <laughs> bottle. When my brother turned 50. The waiter brought us uh, uh, the most exquisite gin ever in my life. We drank it straight. But um, and it was incredible. But I like Noah Silver. I like a lot, a lot of gins. It's got to be a good gin, and I, I drink that um, shaken to the point where the bartender need, or me needs a nap. He shakes it so much I like it really cold. Two olives, not dirty typically. Uh, I, I really enjoy a Reposado or a Yango Old Fashioned, okay. which I use I use the um, blue agave nectar instead of sugar, and uh, I'll use a little more of the orange uh, pulp than I would for the regular Old Fashioned. And a good Reposado or uh, Yeho is very good. And then I, I enjoy a good Pinot. I like a good nice. Pinot Noir wine Love it. very much. I don't eat meat almost ever at night, but if I do, I like a Pinot with it. And, um, and my wife will drink wine, typically not anything else. So, um, but honestly, I like everything. I like, I, <laughs> the other day, I had, a, I had Tito's vodka. My dad likes Tito's. We have Tito's in our house. And I took a little frozen OJ and just mixed it in there. Do I have any OJ in the house? And I squeezed a little lemon in there. I don't know why. And then we had some raspberries. And I just, I literally just crushed a raspberry in it. Had a little club soda. Like, I don't drink tonic water. Mixed it up. It was great. My wife loved it. So I enjoy experimenting. And we have some like shampoo, raspberry liqueur. I'll use that sometimes, especially for guests. I like mixing drinks for my guests a lot. I like it. All right. And the last one. Of course, I couldn't let you get out without this one. Who are the top five NBA players of all time? So I've always answered Jordan Magic Bird. That's the top three. I don't say that anymore. Right now I go LeBron, Jordan, Magic, Duncan, Bird. Wow. That is Kareem, so I, I, I love Kareem, and I probably <laughs> should include him. But I love Bird so much just because he was Magic's foil. Magic <laughs> isn't as good without Bird, but I probably should include Kareem. I'm probably wrong. Um, but yeah, so I would go LeBron, Jordan, Magic, Duncan, Bird. Excellent, Coach. I want to thank you so much for your time, man. This has been awesome. Been so looking forward to this. I'm glad we got to do a little one on one. So looking forward to more conversation with you going forward on True Hoop. Me too, my man. We'll talk tomorrow. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, bud. See you, bud. All right. Take care. That was Coach David Thor. <laughs> Spent a couple years out here with these raps Tryna have a plan that we may come true Plotted some jobs but I ain't hit back I don't wanna trap what some man gon' do Chevy told me come